Hello everyone, welcome to Pinet Labs. My name is Chirag and in this video today we are going to explore VLANs. Did you know that configuring VLANs can significantly enhance your network performance and security? Let's dive into the concepts of VLAN and understand how this exactly works. In this video, you will learn about how to configure VLANs on both Cisco switches and routers, ensuring the network performance and efficiency. So let's get started and let's understand what VLAN is all about. If you enjoyed the content of the video, don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel. First of all, we need to understand that what exactly happens when we don't have VLANs. So let's try to realize the importance of VLAN first of all. If I talk about a network where we have a switch and multiple end devices connected to it, like this, by default, they all will be participating into the VLAN number one, which is the default VLAN found on the Cisco devices. Now many network administrators struggle with managing traffic and ensuring security across different segments. This is because each device on network needs to speak with each and every other device. And this can lead to a lot of unnecessary exchange of traffic. Not just the exchange of traffic, but also the security breaches. VLANs can provide a solution to this problem, especially uh, when you have to manage different teams. And this is quite interesting, but a little tricky as well to be understood if you are a beginner to the networking concepts. But without VLANs, your network can become a bottleneck, bottleneck slowing down the entire operation and performance of the network devices. So with VLANs, this can be enhanced and can be improved uh, by ensuring the exchange of traffic only in a certain broadcast domain. Let's understand how. When we talk about a scenario like this where we don't implement any VLAN configuration, all the traffic would be exchanged by all these devices with each other. For example, if PC A generates a broadcast message, it would be received by PC B as well as PC C. But we don't want that. We want to put them into different VLANs. So what we do, we create VLANs. Like this, let's say VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. Now all the VLANs are different broadcast domains and any traffic that gets generated by the PCA would be limited within this particular VLAN. So that's how VLAN helps us in ensuring that we don't exchange unnecessary broadcast from one device to the other device. Now many network administrators I have spoken uh, have told me that they understand the benefits somehow, but they are not sure when to uh, basically start with the configuration. And they, they might have tried to set up the VLANs in the past, but ended up with a mess on their hands. Or maybe they have been putting it off because they think it's too complicated. VLANs are actually pretty straightforward. You just need to understand the basics but you do need to know about the configuration as well so you need to know the commands that needs to be implemented on the cisco switches which can make sure that vlans gets created correctly and can help you in ensuring a better security so we in this video are going to explore the step-by-step -step process of setting up vlans including creating the vlans then mapping the ports to them and then configuring routing as well using a router by the end of this video you will be having a clear understanding on how to configure VLANs on Cisco devices. First, we'll start off with the very basics. We'll create a VLAN. So we are going to take one switch. We'll connect multiple end devices with it. And like I said, by default, they'll be operating inside the VLAN number one. So I'll show you how to check the default VLAN of the interfaces. But after that, will create some VLANs and assign ports to it. For example, this is 0 slash 1, this is 0 slash 2, this is 0 slash 3. So I'll create a VLAN number 10 and I'm going to put 0 slash 1 port inside that. Similarly, a VLAN number 20 having the port 0 slash 2 in it. VLAN number 30 having the port 0 slash 3 in it. 
this will give us a good understanding on how VLANs uh, have to be set up. Then we will move on configuring the routing between VLANs. For this, we will require a layer 3 device, which is going to be my router. This is where things will get a little tricky, but don't worry, I'll walk you through it each and every step by explaining the use and uh, benefit of each and every command that we put in. So as we walk through the configuration, I'll explain what each command does and why we are using it. This way, you will know how to configure VLANs and along with that, you will also understand what is going to be happening behind the scenes or what's going to happen inside that particular switch, which is going to make that communication work. So for doing this, I'll connect one router with my switch and then using this router, I'll create some sub interfaces. These sub interfaces will let me make communication between VLAN number 10, VLAN number 20 and VLAN number 30. So as we get to the end of the video, we'll have a good understanding of just not just creating VLANs or putting interfaces inside VLAN, but also configuring routing between them. So let's get started. Let's have a quick look on how this can be configured using the simulator packet tracer. So this is my packet tracer window. I'm just going to take one simple layer two switch. And like I said, the very first thing that we are going to do is we'll connect end devices with it. And I'm going to create three VLANs. So this is the connection right now. Let's also put the IP configuration on these devices. I'm going to put all of them in different networks. So PC0 will have the IP 192.168.1.10. PC1 will have the IP 192.168.2.10. And PC2 will have the IP 192.168.3.10. I'll go to PC0, desktop, IP, and I'll configure the IP 192.168.1.10. That's going to be my subnet mask gateway as of now we don't require because we don't have any router connected to us yet. But in the coming uh, configuration, we'll be putting the gateway as well on these devices. Next, I'll go to the next PC and put the IP 192.168.2.10. Third PC desktop IP 192.168.3.10. Right now they all are participating in the same VLAN and we can check that by going into the CLI and running the command show VLAN brief. When you check that command, you can see all the interfaces that you have are by default participating into the default VLAN, VLAN number one. Now we'll create some VLANs. So get into the configuration mode and here I'll type down VLAN 10 name VLAN or let's call it red. That's how easy it is to create a VLAN. You just need to say VLAN and then the VLAN ID that you want to use. Then if you want to give it a name, you can take a name. Similarly, VLAN 20, I'll call it, let's say blue and then VLAN 30, I'll call it black. Once I am done, I can take the exit. That was my first step. Now second step is assigning the ports to the appropriate VLANs. So as per our topology, you can check FA01 should be a part of VLAN 10, right? FA02 should be a part of VLAN 20 and FA03 should be a part of VLAN 30. So I'll, I'll put some custom shapes as well. So this is my VLAN 10. This will be my VLAN 20. And we can say this is going to be my VLAN 30. So let's go and assign the ports as well to the dedicated VLANs. Right now, FA01, FA02, FA03, they all are in the default VLAN. So let's change their VLAN from default to the appropriate ones. So we are right now inside interface FA01. I'll set the mode of my switch port as access by saying switch port mode access. So access ports or you can say the mode access represents that my interface is going to participate into one VLAN. Then there are trunk ports which basically says 
that my my interface will not participate in any VLAN but can speak to all the VLANs. Access ports, again I am repeating, access ports are those ports which can be a part of one VLAN and can speak to only one VLAN. And then there are trunk ports which participate in no VLAN but can speak to all the VLANs. So FA01 needs to be an access port and it needs to be a part of VLAN 10. And that's how we make it a member of VLAN 10. Switch port access VLAN 10. Exit. Similarly, FA02 switch port mode access and then we can say switch port access VLAN 20. FA0 slash 3 switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 30. That's all. We are done. Now if you go and check show VLAN brief again you can see the mapping of interfaces is done correctly. Now FA01 is a part of VLAN red which is the VLAN number 10. FA02 is a part of 20. FA03 is a part of 30. So far so good. We have successfully implemented the different VLAN configurations and we have assigned successfully the interfaces to the appropriate VLANs. Now the time is to put routing between them. So this one, like I said earlier as well, this is going to be a little tricky. So make sure you are quite attentive and you understand this well. Now to implement routing between them, I need a layer three device. So that's going to be my router. I'll get into network devices. I'll take one router here. And we are going to make a cable connection between the router and the switch like this. Okay. Remember I told you there are two types of switch ports, access ports and then the trunk ports. Access can only speak with one VLAN but trunks can speak with all the VLANs. FA04 of my switch needs to forward the traffic of VLAN 10, 20, 30, all of them towards the router. So in order to speak or in order to take the traffic of all these VLANs, it has to be a trunk port, right? So I'll go to my switch. I'll configure interface FA0 slash 4 as trunk port, switch port, mode, trunk, exit. We are done with the switch configs. Now it's time to put configurations on router. So let's understand what we require on router. On router, I need gateways, right? I need 1.1, 2.1 and 3.1. So basically I need a gateway for VLAN 10, VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. But if we look at the router, we just have a single physical interface, which is FA00, right? So we need basically sub interfaces here. We need to create some sub interfaces that we can use for all these VLANs working as a gateway for them. So let's do this configuration as well. I'll go to my router, CLI. I'm going to say no to the question. Enable config T. First of all, I'll go to the interface FA00 and I'll bring it up by typing the command no shutdown. Once the interface is up, we can take the exit and we will start creating sub interfaces. So interface FA00.1. That's how you create a sub interface. Your sub interface number can range from anything between this whole big number, which is somewhere around 4.2 billion. So 0 to 4.2 billions, you can take any ID. I'm going to take the number 1, FA00.1, enter. Then I need to tag this particular sub interface with VLAN number 10. How do we do it? We say encapsulation dot 1Q and then the VLAN number 10. So I have attached my FA00.1 with the VLAN number 10. Then after this, I'll put an IP address on it. So I'm going to put the IP address 192.168.1.1 so that it can work as a gateway for me. 255.255.255.0 and then we can take the exit. That's how easy it is. Now similarly, interface FA00.2. This I'll use for VLAN 20. So I can say encapsulation.1q20 IP address. 192.168.2.1 255.255.255.0 exit 
Finally, FA00.3, encapsulation.1Q30, IP address 192 168 3.1255255250, exit. And we are done, guys. That was all what we had to do. Now we just need to go to the end devices and put the gateway information on them so that we can make them speak with each other. So I have given the IP 1.1, I'll go to the PC 2, I'll give the IP 192.168.2.1, then the third one with the IP 3.1. It's time to verify. Let's see if they can speak with each other or not. So I'll go to command prompt and I'll try to ping 192.168.2.10. I'll switch back to the window. Yeah, we can see the replies are there. That means the communication is successfully established. Awesome. I'll try to ping 3.10 as well. Let's see. There you go, we got the replies, right? So this is where all the pieces come together. And now we are able to see exactly how to take a network from scratch and turn it into a highly efficient and highly secure VLAN based network. So this is how simply it can be implemented. So in this video, guys, we have covered the essentials of VLAN configuration on Cisco devices, highlighting the benefits and practical steps that are required to implement this in your own network. We have come a long way in this video and I hope you feel confident now that you have got the ability of configuring and working with VLANs, right? So if you found this video helpful, check out our next video as well, which is going to be about advanced configuration of VLANs. And don't forget to leave your questions in the comment box and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.